guys welcome to my youtube channel i am susan in today's video we're going to be talking about my journey to becoming an engineering professional so quick overview of how this is going to go we're first going to start off with what i looked for in a university or what i was looking for in regards to the engineering space before i actually got into it then we're going to look at what i found out about engineering in university and then also what I found out after graduating from uni and then the outro will just be some you know unsolic unsolicited advice as to why you should study engineering or like if you are considering studying engineering so let's get into the video so before we start please be sure to like and subscribe comment down below if you have anything to add or say to the content and be sure to share this video if you find it useful and relevant so let's dive right in. So before I went to university, I was paralyzed and plagued by the decision-making process of choosing a career as a 16 year old. And I say 16 because that's how old I was in grade 11, which is the year in South Africa, we use those results to apply for provisional acceptance into the institutions of our choice. So it was a lot to take in as a teenager, but ultimately I decided to study civil engineering specifically because first of all, I wanted a stimulating career and secondly, because of the social impact I know it has on society, despite, you know, I mean, it is a STEM career, but it, if you are a civil engineer, you know, it feels a bit philanthropic because of the number of lives that you can change with one project. So. Before I actually got to university, the things that I considered about the universities I was applying to was firstly their rankings in South Africa, the country and the continent, and also in the world. But I guess the world ranking didn't really matter much to me. Um, what mattered was the ranking in South Africa. And then what also mattered to me was where the university ranked in terms of that discipline or the field of engineering so you can also check that out on i'll put the link in the description this website i think is top universities or qs rankings one of one of those and you can have all these filters and settings where you can check the rankings of universities internationally or and also based on the field of study you're looking into so cool something else i considered was school fees because i was self-funded so the money also kind of dictated where I was applying to and a shocker or something that if you didn't know because maybe because you're South African is that international students actually I paid um, 700 Rand for my application fee to Vitz University and I think 300 at UCT whereas yeah locals only pay 100 Rand so if you're an international student and you're considering applying to a South African university, also be sure to check out the application fee and also the school fees. Something to note is that Wits University charges international students twice the local rate and UCT does not charge twice the local rate, but they do charge a marked up percentage. Um, and I think last time I checked, it was just about, it was like a marked up percentage of 40% of the school fees for locals. So these are serious things to consider you know funding university rankings and the last thing that i looked at was people i knew who had gone to these institutions so fortunately for me my siblings both studied at Wits university but i also knew people who'd gone to the university of cape town these are the top two institutions that i applied for so it's always good to be able to find someone on the ground to communicate these things to you and most likely someone who is in a similar boat to you so if an international student look for international students if you're local look for local students but yeah shared same shared experience same lived experience and then finally i was admitted into both the University of Cape Town and the University of the Witwatersrand. But I opted to go to Wits because they gave me an entrance scholarship and it was also closer to family amongst a whole lot of other factors. So now fast forward, I get to Wits and things that I didn't know about engineering was stuff like there's something called continuous professional development. I only found this out when I was studying my degree and there's this 
like voluntary body called the South African Institute of Civil Engineers, well, you pay a membership to be a part of it. But student members have free membership for the duration of their studies. And essentially, they're the ones who like curate and um, they come up with like these curriculums and everything in collaboration with EXA, the Engineering Council of South Africa. And these are like uh, courses that you need to do to like continuously professionally develop yourself so these points that you accumulate from attending these courses actually are you know tallied up against your name and they're what allow you to keep your membership with the engineering council of south africa so this ha only happens when you're professionally registered that's something else i found out upon studying getting into my degree because i thought my education just ends when i graduate and it does not it does not poor teenage susan was in for a shock um knowing that her degree also has its own caveat of having to do stuff after you graduate just like being a lawyer or a doctor or an accountant so cool learned about professional registration with the engineering council of south africa I learned about continuous professional development um, and we also had to like attend these talks as well for us to get CPD points which are also continuous professional development points which are also a requirement for our degree and something else I also found out about was exit level outcomes so there are these 11 outcomes that EXA has come up with to say that this is what the ideal engineering like candidate comes out of university with you know and each of the modules in our curriculum are catered to meet the requirements of like specific outcomes so i also didn't know about that i'm like oh it's serious in here it's very serious and of course i mean it should be because people's lives are at stake when you're an engineer so yeah i found out about all these things and it just made me realize that engineering is such a multifaceted and esteemed career way beyond the basic knowledge i had about it just oh you build roads and you build bridges and call it a day so yeah and then upon graduating i registered as a candidate engineer with the engineering council of south africa i made a whole how to registration guide because a lot of my friends and classmates were asking me how i went about it because i was I registered quite early, like I finished school December 2020, I finished like my curriculum and then January 2021 I applied for registration with the Engineering Council of South Africa. I did it so quickly because I needed it, I needed that certificate for immigration purposes. So cool, um, I came up with a how-to guide, I'll link it below, I had a whole LinkedIn post where I uploaded it via PDF on LinkedIn, so be sure to check that out if you are a candidate. If you're a graduate um, from a South African institution or a graduate engineer from and you want to work in South Africa, then you can definitely have a look into my engineering registration guide for candidate engineers. Something else I found out upon graduating is that employers do consider soft skills. So they want to see that you have the capability of leading yourselves, even if it's in initiatives that are not directly related to your career because um wake up call everyone you can't just be a robot of a person you know you have to show empathy like the term even in my career civil engineering civil is of the people you are for the people you are by the people so how can you be a people engineer if you're not like you know amongst the people you know yet you need to be a, you need to be a relatable person and relatable people do the things that the common people do you play a sport you attend like you have a club you learn an instrument like you know languages because these are the things that help you connect with the people that your engineering solutions are helping to solve so if you have any opportunity during your undergraduate degree, during your career to be involved philanthropically, I advise that you do it, volunteer work, um, just your hobbies, guys, just be part of society. That's my advice. And be part of societal things that you can also add to your CV. I'm not saying everything should be done for the sake of your CV, but I mean, if you can do volunteer work and get a certificate and just 
put it on there why not you know you're helping yourself and you're helping the world so <laughs> soft skills matter register as a candidate engineer and something else that is very crucial that i discovered was the whole international engineering alliance story um and the fact that all these regulatory bodies such as like engineering council of south africa the engineering council here in kenya um the engineering registration board in Botswana, for example like these bodies can belong to international engineering alliances so the main one that i identified that is like a big deal is the washington accord and i can also link it below um which countries are part of the washington accord and the reason i'm making mention of this is because if you are hoping to like work overseas even from the get-go upon graduating ideally you would want to be studying at a university in a country whose engineering professional body is part of an international engineering alliance as esteemed as the washington accord because these bodies hold each other to a very high regard a very high standard and that's why a south african graduate can go and work in australia because exa is part of the washington accord australia is part of Australia's professional body is part of the Washington Accord and they know that because they hold each other to these high standards a South African graduate will not go there and do nonsense on their projects they will deliver and they will deliver with esteem and quality so guys if you are considering studying engineering I strongly advise that you do check that this the the country that your university is in is part of an international engineering alliance for especially even the Washington Accord because this will help translate your professional capabilities across the world into any um, country that you want to work in that's just like my imparting advice and yeah i think i've basically covered the advice section because i'm telling you guys like focus on social skills in as much as you focus on your technical skills know these things about you know international engineering alliances know about the profession like be in the know about the profession know about university rankings because these things do matter i know at the end of the day we all end up at work but if you can make it easier for yourself to get there why not so anyway guys this is the end of the video and i really hope that it has helped you and has helped someone out there please be sure to like subscribe comment down below what you found the most informative tell me what you knew before and tell me what i'm already telling you that you knew already so i look forward to seeing you in my next video my next sit down which will most likely be me venting about filing my taxes in south africa as an immigrant but till then uh, keep watching the other videos i have on my channel my travel vlogs my other career sit downs and i really hope that i see you in the next one bye